So today we're going to build an alcohol stove using two ordinary tin cans. Um, first of all, you need to scrub the bottom of the paint away. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it, uh, it kind of makes a nicer effect at the end of it. So just get some wire wool and start scrubbing off the bottom end of the can until you get a nice clean, um, clean base. Because we're going to use two cans, one for the bottom, one for the top. Next thing is to mark some holes and make the holes for the uh, flames. So we're making 16 holes around the edges of the can, equally spaced, um, and we're just punching them out with a sewing needle and a pair of pliers. And it's quite difficult to do this, you need a fairly sturdy needle. The first one I used broke, bent in half. Next thing is to do is to cut the base of the, one of the cans out, so this will form the access area for the fuel well. Um, so you want to cut the, cut the uh, base out where the uh, fuel jets are, in the can with the fuel jets. There we go, and then you just need to smooth down the inside of that so you don't have any rough edges. I'm just using a piece of coarse sandpaper to scrub away the roughness. Okay, and then when that's complete, we can cut off the top section. So the easiest way to measure that is to slip a blade in between the pages of a book at about three quarters of an inch, and then turn your top section of the can around so that the blade scores a line around the rim of the can. I'm not doing a particularly good job at this, I could have been a bit more professional. And then you need to cut the can down um, <clears throat> I just hack away at it with a knife, but you know, you could use tin cutters and do a more professional job. I made a bit of a mess of this as this was my first attempt, but you know, it gets the job done. So I've just hacked a hole, hacked it in half, and then uh, taken a pair of scissors to kind of work it down. So this is the top section which is going to fit inside the bottom section. We're going to bend the edges so it fits in. So here I'm smoothing off the cut edge using the knife. I'm just cutting away the, the rough parts. You don't have to worry too much about this because it's all going to go inside the, the bottom section of the stove. So you won't see anything. But you know, for the purposes of neatness, it's nice to try and make it a little bit tidier. And there's a completed top. Um, you also need to cut out the bottom section, which is exactly the same process as for the top, but you need to cut it in about an inch high, and here's the cut bottom section. And then what you need to do is expand the rim so that the top area will fit inside. And the easiest way is to grab a full can and just twist it around inside that lip which you've cut, and that expands the metal a little bit more to make it easier to fit the top section in. And then you just need to take a pair of pliers and bend in the rim of the top section so it fits more easily into the bottom. You're just kind of creating a, a slight uh, indent so it slides in easier. And here I'm trying to fit the top into the bottom. You want to make sure that it actually does fit in so you're going to slip it in there and that's, the, that's what it looks like in the first stage of the completion. Then what you need to do is cut the inner wall. So you want to slice off part of the of a can. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be clean for this because the paint is going to be on the interior wall so you won't be able to see it. The length of the inner wall doesn't matter at the moment because we're going to cut it to size once we've uh, slipped it inside the can. So what you want to do is try to get a, a straight as edge as possible so that when it uh, rolls up, it's sitting nice and flat. And then when you, uh, when you roll it up, you can slip it inside the can like so, and then just mark around the edge. So just take a knife and score around the edge, around the top of the rim, so this will make it exactly the right size to fit inside, and then cut that section off as neatly as possible and then we'll be 
fitting that inside the stove. And then you just need to tape it together. You um, roll it in, and then you mark off about a half inch excess, so there's an overlap of about a half an inch. And this is going to decrease when it's inside the actual lip. So then you can cut that area, cut the excess area off, and tape the loop together. Just with some, I used normal cellar tape, you could use masking tape or insulation tape or whatever. Um, so then you slip it in. And that's, uh, so that's the mock-up now. You need to dismantle it, tape the, the uh, inner wall so that it maintains its shape. And then you use this JB Weld. I, I don't know what the equivalent would be in England. We maybe have something. It's like a heat, heat-proof adhesive up to about 600 Fahrenheit. And you mix two uh, tubes of goo, and it makes this stuff which you can apply with a matchstick into the fold, so that the the uh, inner wall maintains its shape. And then you apply a small area to the top lip inside that rim so that we can stick the inner wall to that upper rim like so and that takes about six to eight hours to dry and you need to wait that time it needs to it needs to be fully dry okay and then in the next day you're going to glue the top into the bottom so you make some more JB weld up and put a thin layer around the inner of the bottom of the stove. Don't put too much on, you don't need so much, but again, I'm not doing a particularly professional job on this. And then you slip the glued inner into the outer section, push it down carefully. I made a little bit of a mistake and made a crinkling in the inner wall on this. I had a few problems, but still it works, so complaining. I'm going to get that in there nice and tight and then kind of compact it down so it's closed properly and again then you need to leave it for uh, six to eight hours to dry thoroughly. I had to plug a little hole in mine with a bit more of VJB weld. What I'm doing here is smoothing down the ridge where the outer uh, covers the upper. I'm just using the edge of the blade to kind of smooth down any rough edges and then it's essentially complete and what you end up with is a very light alcohol stove weighing about four to six grams so there's only one more thing left to do and that's to see if we can get it to light it took a little while it was quite windy but as you can see it's burning quite nicely the jets are jets are working and of course you really need to have a windshield with this but essentially there you have it quick and easy alcohol stove